Baryonyx Walkerai, the long-awaited semi-aquatic who was originally in Legacy and since then has been reworked to have a much sleeker, sexier design that doesn't remind me of a meth head. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was really offensive. To Baryon. This dinosaur is set to be a fan favorite, with many an IO player already calling for its release before its development has even begun, at least to our knowledge. While Barry was a semi-popular choice in Legacy, it did not fill any specific niche due to its lack of special mechanics, much like most animals with the previous build of the game. So, how will it fare in the harsh, unforgiving, flying fish inhabited, 1000 km per hour cloud moving world of Evrima? Let's discuss how Baryonyx should be. First and foremost, I think it's appropriate that we review Barry as it was in the worst place that I can possibly think of. The real world! Or, more accurately, 130 million years ago, when it roamed the mudflats of the second worst place I know of. It is common knowledge in the Paleo community that Baryonyx is a piscivore, a dinosaur whose diet was primarily composed of fish. However, what many may not know is it was the first dinosaur who was ever discovered to have been confirmed to feed on fish, as was evident by the scales found in the stomach cavity of a specimen in the year 1983. Despite this newfound evidence, there are paleontologists that speculate that it may have also been a decent hunter or a scavenger, as that same specimen had remains of a juvenile Mantellosaurus as well, a genus of Iguanodontian. Much like the modern-day British person... <laughs> okay, okay. I'll stop alienating my audience. You get it? Because they're alien- I am on a roll tonight! Woo! Baryonyx had more teeth than Tyrannosaurus, which were finely serrated and curved inward to prevent struggling from their slimy prey. Its elongated snout, similar to that of modern-day gharials, is believed to have been used to fish the subtropical river deltas of the Cretaceous period. And, perhaps its most defining feature, is the distinctive 31 centimeter claw on its forelimbs, from which it gets its name, meaning heavy claw. Very creative, I know. This distinctive spinosaurid had all the tools necessary to be a prehistoric Jeremy Wade, and more than likely thrived in its natural habitat. Now, with the imminent release of Gateway right on the horizon, it better be soon, and after spending way too many hours watching videos that showcase its complex river systems and deep lakes that actually have foliage and debris in them, I think it's worth speculating how Baryonyx will play in the aisle. Based off of its concept art and design, Barry gives off the aura of a speedy striker who is more than capable of defending itself from many of the smaller and medium tier dinosaurs on the aisle. It's very possible it may be able to safely hunt some of the smaller creatures, including Baby, Ostroraptor, Minmi, if it wants a crunchy snack, Protoceratops, and Juvenile Dinosuchus. And I want to hammer home the word juvenile, because this gives me a bright idea. Let me preface by saying that I don't hate Dinosuchus. I think they're a necessary evil, much like the FBI, the CIA, Dondi. The point is, they add a sense of dread to simply going to the bank and getting a drink of water fearing you'll be swept away into the gaping maw of the aquatic beast. This is a great aspect that reminds us the Isle is supposed to be a horror game, an unforgiving experience meant to echo the brutality and uncensored violence of a prehistoric world not often shown anywhere else. Except Florida. New players may not be aware, but experienced players know that there's definitely a Dino overpopulation issue in the Isle. Not only do these overgrown lizards all swarm the same spot at center on Spiro, but once it has grown past a certain point, very few animals in the game can reliably win in a head-to-head -head confrontation. And the one dinosaur that does stand plenty a chance of actually winning is the biggest, slowest, most boring to play hunk of fat in the entire game right now. That is why I am proposing that Baryonyx hunt juvenile Dinosuchus to keep their population under control. This is partly due to the fact that when Baryonyx releases, its biggest competitor in the aquatic environment will more than likely still be Dinosuchus, as many of the bigger semi-aquatics will most likely not be added up until that point. But Kingfisher, Baryonyx will come out when Gateway is already well implemented and being used. Why would we need a Peter Pan character to be on its diet? If there's one thing Dino players are, it's crafty. 
they'll find a spot on Gateway to frequent. And while their population may be reduced due to the introduction of new dinosaurs causing players to actually try something new, sometimes there will be an overabundance, due to the near invulnerability that comes with being an adult crocodile. Which makes sense. Of course, one of the apex creatures will be a powerhouse when compared to weaker ones, and that power should not be made easy to obtain. Baryonyx will act as the main barrier that will funnel out the subpar Dinosuchus players, who may not be fit to survive until adulthood. This will, in turn, make a mature Dinosuchus a much more dangerous and meaningful encounter, as you will know the effort that player has put in to grow that animal to adulthood. But more importantly, what I am proposing is carnivores' diets to change as they get older to accommodate their nutritional needs. Juvenile Baryonyx may have a diet entirely or at least primarily composed of fish, so as to not pursue more dangerous game or spend most of its time scavenging. As it gets older, it can begin to fancy larger, more ambitious prey, such as the animals I mentioned earlier, with juvenile dinos being a staple of its diet. Baryonyx would effectively be the jaguar of the isle, swift, powerful, and able to prey on crocs. However, it will of course have its limitations. In line with its reputation, Baryonyx would ultimately be a semi-aquatic. Semi. Meaning, while it would be a proficient swimmer compared to an Allosaurus or an Omniraptor, it would not be able to outswim a fully grown Dinosuchus or Baby. I'm not trying to say that an aquatic Wolverine would be able to kill a berry, I'm just using it as a reference for speed. On land, Baryonyx would have a small turn radius, able to twist and turn through the jungle with ease. But, it would most definitely find itself in trouble if chased in the open by a Carnotaurus, a pack of raptors, or a Diablo who stepped on a Lego. This dinosaur would display proficient agility and swiftness for its size. It belongs in dense swamps and jungles, where it can disappear from anyone's line of sight when faced with an unfavorable encounter. Going out into the open would be a death sentence for a lone Baryonyx. Given its name, Baryonyx should rely on its claws as its primary form of defense and offense. While this may not be confirmed, and may not be implemented due to how possibly overpowered it may be, this. A depiction of an adult specimen, demonstrating to an Omniraptor that it, indeed, fucked around and found out. Using its powerful forelimbs, it may be able to rip off animals that can pounce it, such as raptors and truodons. I am absolutely a fan of this being Baryonyx's buck. Why would an animal adept with powerful forearms and such large claws not use them to rip its enemies off its flank? It should obviously come with a huge trade-off. For example, the cost of immense stamina usage, using at least 25% of its bar depending on how big the animal is that pounced it. Its bite, while not being nearly as powerful as its swiping attacks, would still be something to watch out for in a battle. With its curved teeth made possible by the power of nature and British dental care, that's the last one I promise, it could cause a substantial amount of bleed for anyone unlucky enough to be caught in its grip. The Baryonyx is a dinosaur meant to be played by those who prefer a diverse lifestyle. Being able to both fish and hunt smaller to medium-sized creatures, its gameplay would bring lots of diversity in the form of one crocodilian package. I personally feel a duo or a trio of berry seems like it should be the standard. It's a great option for people who also don't have any friends to play the game with, like me. But if you're a god of the game and you play your cards right, also like me, then the Baryonyx will be a stellar choice for lone wolf players. Prowling the waterways of Gateway would be an experience that many other playables in this game would be unable to provide, as it is equipped with the speed and ability to either flee at a moment's notice, or engage in combat that would only stop when one animal is guaranteed its next meal. I also would like to mention this image of an adult specimen seemingly using this tree as a scratching post. While nothing has been confirmed yet, this presents the possibility of an interesting mechanic for sharpening a dinosaur's claws or horns. The reason I mention it is because similar art has been shown in Triceratops and Dinochirus' concept art. Perhaps these animals will need to routinely sharpen their natural weaponry on blunt objects in their environment, such as interactive trees and rocks, to prevent them from getting too long and keeping them nice and sharp. If properly taken care of for long enough, the claws and horns would receive a damage buff so long as they're intact. All of this would also encourage natural behavior. 
Besides that, Barry is slated to be my personal favorite all-time playable. It fits perfectly with my playstyle as I like to get a little flexible in video games. And I cannot wait until it's shown the love that I and many other fans feel that it deserves. I just hope that the developers will do it justice and deliver yet another amazing creature to prowl the wetlands of Gateway, waiting for an unlucky Juvie Crocodile to cross its path. Real quickly before I disappear for another couple of weeks, I wanted to thank you guys for surpassing 500 subscribers after I put up my last video. Seriously, I couldn't be more thankful for this. I still can't believe I'm gaining this kind of traction that fast. But regardless, I also wanted to give a shout out to V Raptor K. Uh, I'm sure y'all noticed that fire new profile picture at the beginning of this video. And that was courtesy of my buddy V Raptor K. They also make IL content, so if you guys are that starved from the lack of content from the developers, you can go on over to their channel and check them out. You won't be disappointed. I'll leave a link down in the description in case you're interested. And with that, I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. This has been Kingfisher.